Good morning. Good morning. According to my clock, it is now 11 o'clock and you can all hear me. I want to welcome everyone to worship this morning and it's just so wonderful to look out and see all the Pentecostal red in the congregation. And we also want to welcome those who might be watching live on Facebook this morning, worshiping with us at home. And we're just so delighted to have you here today on this special day for the life of the church. Um, we all have a few announcements this morning. Um, we did send out the notice that there's a praise, prayers of praise that Stephanie's surgery went well and she's doing much better, is at home. And uh, after worship, you are all invited, please, to come to the fellowship hall where the PW will have a light lunch for us all and we'll continue our celebration and also have a chance to take up the birthday offering. And I just want to take a minute to tell you about what that goes to. Um, the, the Presbyterian women have given to uh, millions of dollars over the years to different uh, uh, entities that need help. And the two that they are focusing on this year, one is a home uh, that is to house homeless people in transition in Maine, and the other one is a place in Puerto Rico that has been hit by um, hurricanes and earthquakes, and yet this church there is the place where people go to get help. And so what they're doing is they are going to rebuild the kitchen and make it solar so that if an earthquake happens, uh, they'll be able to continue to serve their community. So uh, these are both two wonderful things that we have uh, a chance to donate to. So that'll be uh, at the luncheon afterwards or any time, actually. Um, just a reminder tonight, there'll be a meeting for the uh, uh, committee of the, the future planning, and then we'll meet with Dr. Branch tomorrow. You're welcome, even if you haven't been a part of that yet, to, to come on and join us there. And uh, so we are just delighted. So if there are no further announcements, does anyone have any from the, from the congregation that I've missed? I can't think of any other pastoral cares at the moment. In that case, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Latin boy we were saying was come Holy Spirit. Let us now have our call to worship. Wild and free, creative and refreshing, God's Spirit <clears throat> blows through this place. Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Gentle and mysterious, patient and caring, God's Spirit moves in our hearts. Come Holy Spirit. Breaking barriers and making connections, 
healing divisions and making us one. God's Spirit flows between us. Come, Holy Spirit. Let us pray. God, our Creator, Earth has many languages, but your gospel proclaims your love to all nations in one heavenly tongue. Make us messengers of the good news that through the power of your spirit, all the world may unite in one song of praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> We invite all the children down. And even if you're brand new, come on down. Chris has a wonderful message for us this morning. So come on down, kids. We've got some visitors this morning. That's great. All right, and look at these colors. Thank you. Good morning. Well, in case y'all don't know what's on our heads, what, what did y'all learn about in Sunday school this morning? Tell these other kids. You remember? The disciples get a present from Jesus. Yes, they did get a present, didn't they? Do y'all remember what that gift was? Holy Spirit. There you go. The Holy Spirit. So for those who weren't in Sunday school this morning, today is Pentecost Sunday, and that's when God sent the Holy Spirit to live in the hearts of the disciples and those who believe in him. And what was so cool, how did the Holy Spirit come down? 
from heaven. From heaven, but what, what did the disciples have on their heads? Fire. Yes, tongues of fire. So that's what we have on our heads this morning. <laughs> and one more thing. Um, what started that day? What, what birthday started that day? Jesus. It's the church's birthday. That's when the church started. So we are going to celebrate the birthday of the church today with a little gift that Sue Ellen has for everybody. And the kids are going to pass them out. I've asked that, <clears throat> excuse me, the children are going to help pass out these. You're all going to get one of these. And if there's not enough, you may have to share. I put a few down for decorations, but make sure at least that the kids get them. And all the adults, you're going to pass them out to everybody in the... Yeah. And there are going to be times during the service that I'm going to ask you to do something with these. So just be prepared. Okay. At, where did Alex go? At, let, can you help? <laughs> we need we need help. <laughs> yeah, keep going. Make sure everybody gets some. <laughs> yeah, they need some in the back over there. You might play a little Pentecostal. <laughs> Who still needs one? Raise your hand. <laughs> you may, like I say, you may have to share. Couples may need to share. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Chris. Let's have a short prayer. Lord, we do thank you for these children and for the church and for the church family. Please help us always remember that every day should be a celebration of your spirit being with us in this world. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. We turn now to a time of confession. The promise of Pentecost lies in the relentless, irresistible activity of God, whose spirit comes among us with power and grace. God refuses to leave us alone, but rather keeps showing up with mercy and love. In confidence, let us confess our sin, first in silence and then together. Let us pray. God of fire and wind, holy and powerful, mighty and mysterious, we are drawn by your spirit to this place. As we gather and behold your glory, we become aware of our sin. We have ignored your word, we have rejected your gifts, we have failed in your work, ignoring the truth of Pentecost. We exclude those different from us. We divide our loyalties and we divide our hearts. Let your spirit burn away our sins and fill us with faith and courage so that we might live into the promise of this day and receive the fullness of all that you have prepared for us in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit animates our lives, lifting us into the presence of Christ and sealing our hearts in the promise of his faithful love. This is good news. In Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven.
be seated. As we turn now to scripture, let us pray. God of power and grace, fill us with the wisdom of your word and the understanding of your spirit so that we may be your church, the people with dreams and visions at work in all the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scriptures today, one of them is the very familiar passage from Acts about what happened at Pentecost, reading from Acts 2, and it's actually verses 1 to 21, not 1 and 2, a typo that I didn't catch. <laughs> when Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them saying, oh, they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this, listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk as you suspect. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young will see visions, your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And our second passage is three short verses from Romans. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. These are some of my favorite passages. Of course, I, I could, it's like asking me what my favorite hymn is. It's impossible. There's so many. I love so many hymns, and I love so many passages of scripture. But this one I especially like because I love language. You know, I was an English teacher in my former life, and I love language, and I love exploring language. And all my life, it's been a fascination to me, not just that, you know, we can speak and understand each other, but I want to dig into, you know, where did that word come from? What is the etymology of it? You know, how, why do we say what we say? 
And so much to, that sometimes it makes it hard for uh, me to learn other languages because I'm so, still so fascinated by English. But language is so important and in so many ways. One of the things that struck me as I was thinking about this and going over and over again in my head, you know, what, what, it, what the Spirit was calling me to say this morning. And one of the things that I think I want to start with, and because I'm going to come back to it, is language, as beautiful as it is, is also one of the most divisive things in the world. And it's not because we speak a different language, maybe French, German. No, it's those of us who are speaking the same language who use that language in a divisive way. To say words that aren't loving or healing, to denigrate. So language is dangerous. Language can be dangerous because of how we use it. But it's also a beautiful, beautiful thing. And in this passage, I think it's so fascinating. And it, you know, I think the first times I read this passage, I had this image of this huge room and all these people gathered, but that's not what it was. It was the disciples, the 12 guys, you know, up, or, up in 11, 12, there were 12 again by then, up in the room, and they were the ones who got the tongues of fire and the spirit. And they were the ones who were doing the speaking. And it was all the people outside who were hearing people talk in their own language. And that is such a beautiful thing. And that really became uh, uh, even clearer to me because in my career overseas, I was, had the chance to work with a lot of people who work with the Wycliffe Bible translators. And I don't know if you knew this fact of, first of all, how many languages there are in the world. There's something like over 7,000. And of those 7,000 plus languages, the Bible in full has been translated into about seven, over 700. This is as of 2020. Portions of the Bible have been translated into over 3,000 languages, close to, close to 4,000 by now. And that even includes sign languages. Did you realize that sign language is different? <laughs> There's at least 250 different sign languages. And those, these people, who work in Bible translation, and it's a long process, they're wanting to get it right because they are wanting to share the love of God and the story of Christ and our salvation that's found in our scriptures. And I would listen to how the, that process was something that was far more complicated than I thought. It's not just a case of, you know, when we were studying language in school. They actually would get people who, who were not Christians to read the translations, to proofread them, to make sure that everything they said was totally understandable, even to a person who was not a Christian. And that, I think, is another important point. How often are we, uh, maybe not divisive, but kind of exclusive when we use language that only we understand? You know, people laugh about the number of abbreviations that the military has. That's, I don't understand any of those. So I'm totally excluded from whatever they're talking about, you know, when they talk about, all, except AWOL. I think I do know that one. <laughs> Away without leave. But so this, this language, that, so they, wanted, they want to make sure that it's, that it's also culturally appropriate. So in cultures where they don't eat bread, their translations of the Bible might actually say sharing rice or some other thing that their culture represents because the Word of God is so important and so healing and so loving because what does it tell us? Now, Peter says, you know, this is what we're saying, and he's talking about the, the prophesying and the dreaming this is another thing that I used to get wrong. I thought, oh, prophesy, that just means you're telling the future. That's not what it's about either. Prophesying is telling the truth, and it might be a truth for now or a truth for the future, but it's telling it like it is, kind of. And then it says the young are gonna see visions and we're gonna dream dreams. And what are those about? They're about 
how the kingdom of God can come on this earth. That's what they're dreaming about. That's what Joel is talking about. We want to know how can God's kingdom come on this earth. How is that going to happen? So we look at the Romans, and in those three verses, I don't know if you, you bothered to count, he uses the word spirit five different times in three short verses. And a couple of times he's talking about the Holy Spirit, and he's also talking about the spirit that's within us and how the Holy Spirit works with us, with our own spirits, with our own entities. But the important thing is that we are called and identified as part of a family. We're part of God's family. So <clears throat> when I was thinking about what I wanted to call my remarks today, first I had kindred spirits, and then I realized, no, I needed to get that, rid of that last S. It's kindred spirit. And another language trail that I had to follow was the phrase kith and kin. I don't know if you've ever used that. I've always loved it. It's just one of my favorite. And I used to write kith and kin letters. All my letters from overseas I called kith and kin letters. So my kith were the people that I was connected to. And that's literally what kith meant in its original form. It was everything outside the family that you were connected to. So your kith are your friends and then your kin. And so we have kith and kin. But in Romans, what Paul, uh, Paul is saying is that we're all kin. Every one of us is kin. Because as followers of Christ, and even beyond that, as children created in God's image, we are all kin. I even hear a lot of, of, of folks that I know, they don't say the kingdom of God so much as sometimes they'll say the kingdom of God of God. They leave out the G because what they want to focus on is the fact that we're all a family. We're all a family and as such we want to be the people who represent Christ in this world and do what we can. What God is calling us to do as a family. So we don't want to use our language to separate us from people, we want to ask ourselves, and we, we study it all the time, what did Jesus say? <laughs> what did Jesus do? Jesus was the most inclusive, <laughs> table-turning person we can imagine. And we have the Spirit with us so that we can do that. Now, the other scripture that I didn't use today, because actually I think it was, it was I preached on it a couple of weeks ago, was the passage in John, which was Christ's words to his disciples right before he left. And he said, what am I doing? I'm not leaving you with a spirit of fear. I'm not leaving you with fear. I'm leaving you with the Holy Spirit. You've got this. <laughs> You're my family. You're my kin. We're all in this together. But only if we can listen to me, listen to Christ, listen to each other, say words of love and encouragement, and do that to all that you meet. Let people know this delicious meal here, <laughs> this table is for all because Christ's love is for all. And also... We'll share fellowship later. That that's, we're all part of God's family. So be Christ's children. Be Christ's child in that you are part of the family of God. Let your language be language that heals, that brings people together. Let your love shine out through all that you see and do. Let these flames that are with us. I want you to do one thing. I meant to have you do it during the scripture, but I want you to get your, get your uh, pinwheels, okay? Got your pinwheel. I want you to take a deep breath, and I want you to feel like you're pulling the Holy Spirit right into you, all right? Pull the Holy Spirit in, 
And then I want you to just gently blow out. And you can do that more than once if you want, okay? Let's all breathe. That's that sweet, sweet spirit in this place. <sighs> now let's go out of here revived. Amen and amen. Let us now stand and say what we believe. Again, we're using the words from uh, Romans. We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. We are convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. come to our offering. If, you, uh, if all you give is yourself, God's heart will be full. If you're able to give another offering of some sort and it is able to impact another, providing worship that comforts, food that feeds, or relationships that nurture, then perhaps God's heart might overflow. So let us give joyfully now, for the Spirit of God is moving, and there are many who need her comfort. Let us give our offerings now.
God, you have given us absolutely everything we have. You gave us sunsets and speckled eggs, tiny newborn hands and silver moons so that we could know what beauty looks like. You gave us melody and harmony, forgiveness and poetry so that we could know what love sounds like. You gave us hands to build, fire to warm, water to clean, and food to fill so that we could know what peace feels like. You gave us hearts to give, minds to hope, hands to serve, and mouths to pray so that we know what your kingdom lo loves like. So today we pray you might be able to use these humble gifts to bring your kingdom here so that more may know what beauty looks like, what love sounds like, and what peace feels like, saying all the while, thank you, thank you, thank you, for you have given us everything we have. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Family of Faith, on the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up and said to the crowd, Friends, whether you are Jew or Greek, Parthian or Mede, young or old, slave or free, Cretan or Arab, you are welcome here, for this is God's table. So friends, 2,000 years later, the church declares to you, no matter what our difference is, no matter what our faith background, no matter whether you are an old timer or a visitor, young or old, you are welcome here to God's table. This is God's table. At this table we proclaim the kingdom of God. At the table we are united. At the table we are hopeful. At this table we come hungry and we leave fed. At this table, there is space for everyone. At this table, the young can see visions and the old can dream dreams. And at this table, if you listen closely, you may just hear the cry of a child or the rush of a mighty wind. So come, for at this table, you are and always will be welcome. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God. Your spirit hovered over the waters and brought forth all creation. You breathed into us the breath of life and set us on the earth to praise you and serve you. When we lost our way, you called us back, then sent your own Son to save us. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels and with the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior and Lord. By your Spirit, you named him Beloved and empowered him to serve the poor, Proclaim freedom from sin's bondage and befriend the friendless and the outcast. When he breathed his last upon a cross, you raised him from the tomb, breaking the power of death and opening the way to eternal life. When Jesus was at table with his disciples, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. Whenever you do this, remember me. In the same way, he took and poured the cup, saying, Take and drink. Whenever you do this, remember me. Now, whenever we eat and drink at this table, we celebrate Christ's death and resurrection until he comes again. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take the bread and wine and the gift from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Christ Jesus. Accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves, 
that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Unite us with Christ and all who trust in him that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world, intercessions if not elsewhere. Set our hearts aflame with a love for the truth and the desire to do your will. Make our witness to Christ burn brightly and keep us faithful until Christ comes in final victory and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. God of wind, rain, silence, and flame, we came to this table hungry, hungry for a Pentecost experience where you'll fall down like rain and we will know that we are yours. We came to this table hungry for the unity promised in the Pentecost story, a unity that can bind us together with a cord stronger than our differences. We came to this table hungry for a glimpse of your kingdom, so we should have known you'd be here. Once again, you have met us at this table with manna and mustard seeds, with the bread of life and with vines and branches. God of wind, rain, silence, and flame. When we go out into the world and again find ourselves hungry for something better, Remind us of this meal. Remind us how we came to the table hungry and how you met us in ordinary bread, an ordinary cup. To claim us, bind our wandering hearts together and remind us of your coming day. In your name we give praise and in your name we pray as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. go from this place, just a reminder that we will be having a meal down in the fellowship hall and everyone is invited. We please hope you can come. And also, um, I think we're so beautiful, we need to get a picture. So what I'm actually going to ask you to do after I do the benediction is to have people sit back down and so we can get a nice picture of the red out here. We're trying to get our website updated, and this would be a great shot to have. So after I do the charge and benediction, just uh, uh, wait for that. <laughs> get, gotta get the right Sunday here. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Go from this service of worship with refreshed faith from the same Pentecost wind that blew those many years ago. And I think now is a good time Get out your uh, pinwheels. Let's have some Pentecostal wind. You can even do it this way, but it really should come from you. <laughs> that, all right. Warmed with hope from the Pentecostal flame and reminded that you are loved in language you understand just as it was spoken by those same Pentecost tongues, whether it's English or German or whatever. The language of God is the language of love. 
May the God who gives Jesus the one given and the spirit who gives us to one another, God go with you. Amen. And all God's people said, amen. amen. All right. Okay. You may be seated. <laughs> Our official photographer. Thank you. 